Hello. Hey, Joanna, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Let's get started. Um, okay. I just hit the record button. Um, let me close some of these things out. So again, thank you to Muslim Space and Shabana and Rohit for being here to help co-host and plan this out. Um, it has been a year since last time I got to share this with you all. So I'm so happy to be back. Yeah, so um, we'll get started so we can get into the good stuff and do something good for ourselves this evening. Just move mindfully with your body tonight. Remember if something doesn't feel comfortable, we don't need to do it. There's no forcing or straining here. We're here tonight to recharge our battery and fill our cups up and just give ourselves what we need to feel replenished and restored. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna move over to my mat now. And um, Rohit, you can um, stop the screen share and then I'll spotlight my video, please. Yeah, and while, awesome. while Joanne is, you know, shifting into position and whatnot, this is a great time for a gentle reminder that yoga means union. It's a union of our mind, body, and spirit. And more expansively, it's a union of our soul with, uh, with, our, with the divine soul, with God, the universe, however you might want to see it or however you perceive that. And while we rest and relax and rejuvenate our bodies with Joanne's beautiful workout today, and I know it's going to be beautiful because this is our second year bringing it, and she's an amazing instructor. It's also a really wonderful time for us to remember Allah or the universe and reconnect to that while we are doing this restful, um, this restful thing for ourselves during Ramadan. So, thank you. Beautifully said. Thank you for sharing that. All right, so I'm gonna move over to my mat. You're welcome to keep your screens on or off. That's totally up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. So I don't expect us all to have um, the you know fancy yoga props, but there are things around the house that I'd like us to gather up for our practice this evening. So I just have a pillow here from my bed, um, pillows from the sofa, the bed would be nice to have, larger size, smaller size, whatever works. I personally have this um, little meditation cushion, but if you have some type of firmer cushion like so, that would be nice to have nearby our mats. A throw blanket of some sort. So this blanket will utilize to help elevate our chest and heart. And tonight I'd also like us to have a heavy, larger book. Um, we're going to finish our practice tonight in our final relaxation pose and do some abdominal yogic breathing and a heavy object like a book can help. And I also have just a bathroom towel here I have folded up. This can work nicely to help support the back of the head or give us some extra cushion as needed. If you do have eye coverings or a little washcloth, mine wandered away, I'm not sure where it went, but those are nice to have for the end of our practice as well. Um, one other thing that we might wanna have nearby is a box of tissues. Um, sometimes the poses that we do wake up our sinuses. I know a lot of people are affected by um, allergies out there. So it's just nice to have a box of tissues. I'm gonna try to get us into some Nadi Shodhanam tonight, which is a pranayama practice that also really helps clarify our airways and air passages. And since we got some requests for those heart openers and that shoulder area, why don't we go ahead and start in a pose that will assist with that. So this will be a gentle um, Salamba Matsyasana or a supported fish pose. So a couple of things that we're gonna want for that is gonna be our pillow or cushion that we pulled off our bed or our sofa. And we're gonna place that towards the front of our mat to support our legs. In addition to that, I would like us to, once we gather these things up, don't um, hurry, there's no rush, take our blanket, our throw blanket, or our bath towel, and I'll show you how to fold those items. So if you just want a gentle lift for the spine and a gentle heart opener tonight, I would recommend using your bath towel. So I've taken it and I folded it one time long ways. I'm gonna bring the short ends together and have a longer rectangle. And then take that towel and I'm simply gonna fold it one more time 
long edge to long edge. So I have this skinny rectangle. It's only maybe about an inch in height. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna place it to the top of my mat. And that will support the length of my spine and the back of my head. If you're ready and wanting a little more lift, bigger piece of fabric. So I'm gonna take my blanket, same thing. I've already folded it a couple times. So I've gotten it into this rectangular position. And for this one, what I would do is probably do a tri-fold or a quarter fold. So that means when I bring it down up to the ground, I'm gonna fold it over about a third and then back a third. Same thing. I should end up with this long rectangular shape that's an inch or two in thickness. I think I'm ready for a little bit more today. So I'm gonna swap out my towel for my blanket. And we'll make adjustments as we go. Always room to accommodate ourselves here. So when we come down into this pose, we are gonna sit flat to the floor. I'm just gonna swing my legs over my pillow. Now you could even put an additional pillow up there and elevate the legs even more. That's a really nice way to decompress the lower half of the body. We'll align ourselves as best we can with the blanket behind us. Um, maybe you leave about one hand space between the short end of your fold and the lower back. So we want the lower back to be comfortable. I'm gonna lengthen it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna walk myself down so that blanket is running up the edges of the spine. Once I get here, you can bend those knees for a moment and lengthen out the upper buttock even more so that the low back is relaxed and then reposition the legs. If it's comfortable, feel free to stretch the legs out. The feet can be even wider than the hips and so just letting the feet fall open. And then to get the stretch across the heart, we'll cactus our arms. So that means we'll bend at the elbows, dropping our elbows out from our shoulders, and then allow the backs of the hands to flop towards the floor. If the head needs a little bit more support, reach for that top end of your towel or blanket. You can add a little bit more cushion there. If you notice that the backs of the hands are one hand, don't easily touch the ground, that's totally normal. If you can, just that gravity traction out those muscles and maybe after a moment or two, they'll start to lengthen and open up a little bit more. Loosen the clothing up, make any other additional adjustments here in the beginning to get the body comfortable. If you do happen to have a ponytail back there, you're gonna to wanna to move it out of the way so we can find the back center of the skull. Once we all get situated, let's close our eyes so that we can start to redirect our attention inward, allowing ourselves to reconnect to the mind, body, and spirit. Let's give the head a little rock side to side, a little release for the neck. And then that's fine, that very back center of the skull and rest the head there. Relax the face around the eyes, the mouth, tongue, and jaw. If you're a jaw clencher like I am, poof your cheeks with air. Swallow a couple times, stick the tongue out, releasing the tongue and lower jaw to gravity. Relax the throat. Feel this nice opening and gentle lift across the chest and the heart. Relax the muscles around the shoulders. Just let the heaviness of the arms and the hands flop towards the ground. Relax down the length of the spine, around the waist. Let's soften the belly. And then continue to relax those larger muscles around the hips, the hip sockets, the thighs. And let that relaxation continue down the legs, through the knees, into the ankles, feet, and toes. 
And as we're reconnecting to our physical body, scanning our body, relaxing the body, let's also acknowledge and honor any areas that we might be healing or taking care of this evening. Remembering that we practice with a quality of santosha or contentment. So we let go of any judgment. We let go of labeling anything good or bad. We're practicing with acceptance and being content wherever we are this evening. We'll continue to let the whole body relax and now we'll spread our awareness to the breath. Let's begin by just observing the natural breath. Watch the body breathe in and watch the body breathe out. Now, ideally we're breathing as smoothly and evenly as possible in and out through the nose. On our inhale, we might notice that natural expansion. The abdomen may rise, a little stretch through the rib cage. And on the exhale, we'll notice a natural letting go and contraction. The belly falls into the body. The ribs come a little bit closer together. Smooth, even breath in and out through the nose, observing this flow, this rhythm, any sound or movement that our breath makes this evening. Our breath is our guide throughout our practice. And it is a bridge between the mind and the body. So let's all cycle through one more nice round of breathing here. This round of breath, we can try to make it our biggest breath of our day yet. So the next time we get to an inhalation, breathe into the body, let that belly expand, continue to fill the body up into the rib cage, the chest, and let's fill our cup all the way up to the brim in the throat. When we're completely full, we'll slowly and gently start to release the breath now. And we'll try to let this exhale be our biggest exhale of our day yet. The exhale is just as important. So take the time to empty everything out, exhaling away any stress or tension that we might be holding on to. Let it go. Now at the bottom of that exhale, we will let go of trying to follow and control the breath for a moment. Starting to come back into our physical body, let's notice the contact points with the body and the props and the floor below it. We'll start to breathe some life back into the body. So we'll give those toes a little wiggle, wake up the fingertips. Another gentle rock of the head side to side. Little roll of the wrists and the ankles. Now, depending on how elevated we are with the prop behind us, just be careful, mindful. We're gonna to try to stretch our arms even farther overhead now. So reach those fingertips as far away from the body as we can. We're also going to bring our legs a little bit closer together down the middle of the mat. They can stay on top of our prop if we have one there. And start to point and flex the feet. Maybe the feet even hover from the floor if our legs are over a pillow or two. Now let's stretch out our right side a little bit further than the left. Give that left side a little bit bigger of a stretch. And then come back to center, spread the fingers. Flexing the feet, let's spread our toes, pulling our toes to our shin bones. Take one more big breath in. The next exhale, let's slide our arms back down beside the body. We'll step our feet in. And then again, depending on how elevated we are, might depend on how much we can lift our feet up. But we're gonna try to draw our knees in towards the body one knee at a time. 
If this is comfortable, rest the hands on the shin bones and do a slight little rock here side to side. If you're really lifted, probably not gonna be able to go as into far of a compression here. So just be mindful of that low back. Take the hands behind the thighs, stretch the legs straight up to the ceiling for a moment. Viparita Karani, sometimes called waterfall pose. Point and flex those feet. So this pose is a very calming pose, a wonderful way to redirect our circulation, energy and blood flow to our vital organs, towards our heart and our head. And then one more time, we're gonna bend the knees, drawing the knees towards the body. Take one arm beside the head. We'll roll to that side and come into a fetal position. So we're rolling all the way off of our props onto our side. Rest the head on that bottom arm and let the top hand fall to the floor in front of the heart. So this pose is called Supta Balasana or sleeping baby pose. We'll take a moment here to regulate our blood pressure and just transition from our back. Turn the heart towards the ground, press into the ground, and we're gonna come up to a seat. Sometimes that helps to stretch that top leg forward to the top of the mat. Walk your hands towards you to slowly come up. Again, there's no hurry here. So we are gonna come into a seated position at this point. Sitting on the ground is not easy, but it can be very beneficial for our body. But we'll probably want to be um, seated up on something, a nice firm folded blanket. So what I did is I just took that long rectangular fold I had behind me and folded it in half. It's okay to use a pillow, but the pillow is a little soft and we have a tendency to kind of sink into one hip or the other. But if that's all we have tonight, that's fine. Once we're situated with our little bit of a lift, we're gonna sit ourselves up on it. So we wanna prop our sit bones up on our lift. And then we can just take Sukhasana tonight. This is easy cross pose, crossing at the ankles. We may need to lift ourselves up a little bit higher. The most important thing you wanna think about is keeping our spine in a neutral position. So maintaining the natural curves of the spine. If we find that we're hunching and rounding or our knees are being pulled towards us, it's probably just because of tight hamstrings and hips like I have. So feel free to sit up higher. You may always sit towards the edge of a chair or a piece of furniture. We can literally reach around and move the flesh out of the way so that we do have contact with our sit bones so that we can equally weight them. Our pelvis is in a nice neutral position. And again, we wanna lengthen up the spine to the crown of the head. Let's float our fingertips off to the sides of the body here, turning the palms up to the ceiling. Let's come back to the breath. Inhale, breathing through the nose. Let's reach those arms up towards the ceiling. Big stretch. Turn the palms back out and exhale. Float the fingertips all the way back down to the ground. We'll add a little bit of a neck movement here. Again, inhale the arms up. This time just let the gaze move upwards, but keep the back of the neck long. On the exhale, fingertips down. Keep the spine long. Just draw the chin down towards the chest and lift the chest towards the chin. Inhale, breathing, reaching out and up. Chin gently floats up, our drishti moves up towards the ceiling. Exhale, palms down. Drop the chin down towards the chest, keep the spine long. Again, let's inhale those arms up. But this time, we're gonna maintain this length, keep the head at neutral, moving right into a spinal twist. So on our exhale, let's rotate to our right. Your fingertips will fall back down. You may be able to reach to the opposite knee. Your fingertips might lightly touch the ground behind you, but there's no weight in our hands. And then we're gonna continue this rotation up the axis of the spine, through the middle of the back, upper back, the neck. Let's open our eyes nice and wide and try to find the furthest point behind us. 
Inhale, bring everything back up to center. Reach the arms up. Exhale, maintain this length. We're rotating around that axis to the left. Fingertips can float down. Continue that rotation and twisting up the spine, crown of the head. Open the eyes nice and wide and peek behind the body. Let's do that one more time each side. Inhaling up. Exhale, nice twist. Let's keep the shoulders and chin parallel to the floor. Again, inhale up. And exhale one more time to the left. Inhale, let's meet back at center, reaching those arms up. This time, bring the palms to touch and exhale to our center. So we're gonna give our legs a quick break. We are gonna come back to a seated position. So remember which foot is in front because we'll try to switch our cross. But go ahead and float those knees up, stretch the legs up just for a moment, wiggle the feet, prance the legs, bending one knee at a time. And then we'll come back to Sukhasana and try to place the opposite foot in front, find those sit bones. So we'll do one more movement here for our spine. This is called Upavishta Trikonasan or seated triangle pose. And it's lateral extension for the spine. Float the fingertips out beside the body, root the sit bones, draw in gently through those lower abdominal muscles. Inhale, float the right arm up. On the exhale, we're sliding along an invisible wall, stretching the whole right side. Now the inhale is gonna pull us back up through center. Switching arms, keep the sit bones rooted, exhale. A nice lateral stretch, we should feel that through the waist, the rib cage and shoulder. Inhale up. Let's take it over one more time to the left. Feel free to take the drishti or the gaze down to that bottom hand. Just stretch the back of the neck a little bit more. Inhale, pulling ourselves back up through center. Exhale, one more time over to our right. And then let's inhale back up to center. We'll catch up here, bring the palms together. Exhale to our heart. So we'll make another transition now. Some people like to crawl forward over their legs, so you can do that or just uncross the legs, give them another quick wiggle. We're moving around into tabletop position or all fours. So I'll give us a moment to get reorganized. If you would like extra cushion for the knees and you have your blanket handy, you can unfold it so it's not as steep and place that towards the back of your mat for your knees, shins, and feet like so. Another fun little trick is to take about the middle of the yoga mat and just fold it back towards you maybe four inches and then place the kneecaps on that little bit of extra cushion and that can feel quite nice as well. So our tabletop is just that. So the back is the top of the table. Our arms are the front legs of the table. Fingers are spread nice and wide the hands are as broad as the shoulders pressing into the earth. And then our thigh bones are the back legs of the table, knees stacked right underneath the hips. We have a little bit of space between those knees and those feet. The toes may stay tucked under or pointed, that's up to you. We're gonna come back to the breath for a few rounds of Majariyasana or Cat-Cow. So on the inhale, relax the belly, Lift the tailbone up and try to elongate the spine all the way up to the crown of the head, gazing forward. On the exhale, scoop that tailbone under, draw the belly in. Now round the back up to the ceiling, draw the chin to the chest and take that drishti or gaze to the belly button. Follow your breath. Breathing that smooth breath as much as possible in and out through the nose and moving that breath like a wave up and down the length of the spine. 
If we do a lot of sitting all day long, this gentle back bend and cow pose can help decompress the spine. If we hold a lot of tension in our back, we've done some activity in gardening, the rounding pose will help stretch the muscles of the back to help release muscular tension. And if we get into one of those variations tonight and it feels really yummy for our back and our body, there's no reason we can't hold it for an extra breath. We can also add little lateral movements here, drawing the shoulders forward one at a time, little movements in the head and neck. Maybe we're concentrating on a little bit more movement in the pelvis or between the shoulder blades. So whatever feels best for our body tonight, just let things get loosey goosey in there. We'll balance ourselves out. We'll meet back in neutral position. From here, we'll come into child's pose. This will stretch off the low back and the hips a little bit more. And I want us to try wide knee child's pose. So we'll flatten out the tops of the feet, bring the big toes to touch and open the knees wider than the hips. Now, those of us that do take care of our knees, it's not that easy to bring our sit bones to our heels. So we'll take our pillow or a blanket and place it behind us to give us a cushion to sit back on. If it does feel comfortable to sit all the way back to the heels, go ahead and do so. We'll try to walk our fingertips forward to the front corners of our mat and then sink the belly, the heart, and the head all the way down to the ground. Now it's important that our head is supported. So if the forehead does not touch the ground tonight, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. Simply stack your hands under your forehead or slide your towel, your book, or something under the forehead to give it support. Once we're in our position, continue to let the weight of the hips sink back. There is purposeful compression of the knees. We'll get some benefit for our knees when we release this pose in a moment. Take some nice deep breaths into that back lumbar area of our spine. If those fingertips are extended forward, the more we can sink the heart, the more we'll feel that through the side bodies, giving our shoulder girdle a nice big stretch. Balasana, our child's pose, is also a very grounding posture. It's wonderful for insomnia, restlessness, anxiety, a really nice place to come to throughout the day. We just need to crawl into our tortoise shell and reconnect with ourselves and our body and breath. Let's all take one more breath here. The next inhale, we'll float the head and the body back up. We'll revisit tabletop once again. So we'll stack those knees right back underneath the hips. We'll spread the fingers, stacking our hands underneath the shoulders. Feel free to tuck the toes under. Now we're gonna get the blood to rush back down through those knees. So stabilize the hips and the pelvis, draw the low belly in slightly to support the low back. Stretch the right foot straight back from the hip. So the ball of the foot is to the floor. We may shift our weight back through that heel. It won't touch, but the intention is if we were trying to get our heel to touch the ground. Feel an opening behind that knee. Take a deep breath in. Exhale brings the right knee down. Keep that low back and hips level and stable. Stretch the left leg out. Ball the foot to the floor. Pressing the heel back as much as we want to. Keep equal weight in the hands. Just be mindful of where your head is in space. Deep breath in. And then exhale, bring the left knee down. So the next pose we're gonna move into is Adho Mukha Svanasana or Downward Facing Dog. Now this is an inversion, so this could be very beneficial um, for some people as preventative medicine for headaches. It increases that blood flow. But if you're experiencing any headaches in the moment, it might be a little bit much for our body tonight. So we'll just uh, make that judgment call when we get there. 
We'll walk our hands about one hand's distance forward. Toes are tucked under. Draw that low belly in. And then we'll press into the ground to float the hips up to the ceiling. Shift the weight back to the back of the mat and down the legs. Now I'm gonna go through some alignment principles here so we can get as comfortable as possible in this pose. But again, whenever you need to take a break, drop down to the knees or sit back in child's pose. You wanna keep the hands strong, pressing through the first knuckle and the fingers. Roll those upper arm bones away from the ears so that the neck can be long and loose. Feel free to gently turn the head side to side. Now draw the belly in and draw the belly towards the thighs. Look at the feet. We wanna to try to make them as symmetrical as possible. Pointing the toes forward, knees pointing towards the toes. Feel free to bend into the knees a little bit more to help decompress that spine, releasing the back. It's okay if the heels don't touch. We're actually gonna walk our dog here for a moment. So let's all inhale and try to lift our heels up as high as we can. On the exhale, drop the right heel to the ground and bend the left knee. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, drop the left heel down, bend the right knee. So we can do that a couple more times as slowly or quickly as you want. And then we'll try to take one more breath in our resting pose, sinking the heels to the floor and down dog. Tabletop or child's pose if we're modifying. One more breath. So I am going to have us come up to standing just for a moment. So on the next inhale, look forward and baby step your feet to your hands and your hands to your feet. So this is called Uttanasana forward fold. This is another pose that can really help release tension out of the neck and shoulders, get that blood flowing to our brain. We'll just be mindful of our blood pressure and in these inversions. To modify, bend your knees and place the weight of your elbows on top of your thighs so that the back isn't taking all that pressure. From here, you can still drop the head down, give it a gentle little turn side to side. We can also drop one arm at a time out of the shoulder socket, releasing any tension there. The leg should be strong. We're still pulling in and up through the lower abdominals. Those of you that is um, comfortable for the low back, you may try to straighten through the legs, fold the body in half, and hold on to opposite elbows in a ragdoll version, and then do some gentle swaying side to side in the shoulders or the head and neck really just allowing the weight of the world to fall off those shoulders. Just be mindful of the low back. One more breath here. Now to come up, we're gonna take our time. We wanna make sure we're inhaling to counter our blood pressure. We'll all bend our knees and walk our hands up to our thighs. We're turning the fingertips in. We're tucking the chin into the chest. And then on our inhale, we're gonna articulate the spine, stacking one vertebra on top of the other. Strong feet and legs, inhale, inhale, inhale to come up. The head should be the very last thing to come up. When we make it upright, give your shoulders a little shrug up, and then exhale, let them fall away from the ears. So blood pressure is probably low right now from fasting. If you come up and see stars or get lightheaded, please just sit yourself back down to the ground until your blood pressure regulates. If we're up here, we feel comfortable, we feel balanced, then we'll pause and breathe in Tadasana for a moment. Mountain pose. Our feet are our foundation. So let them ground towards the earth. Unlock those knees pulling up through the quadricep muscles. Draw the front body towards the back body and lengthen the upper buttocks down towards the ground. Let's turn our palms forward today and spread the fingers. You'll feel that rotation in those upper arm bones so that we can continue to feel this openness across the chest and the heart. Let the head just float on top of the shoulders. 
no tension here in the neck or the face. So I would like to always incorporate a little bit of balance into my practice. It's very beneficial for the brain. It can be very calming for our nervous system. So we'll just do um, a couple of balancing poses and then work our way back down to the ground. First is palm tree pose with the breath. Take an inhale and reach the arms out to the sides of the room, then all the way up towards the sky. Bring the palms to touch and exhale those hands down through our center. The other thing we use in our balance is our eyes and our vision. So we wanna focus our drishti or focal point on one spot in front of us. Again, inhale the arms out and up, but this time we're gonna to try to lift those heels up. So we're lifting, lengthening, stretching the spine. Exhale, lower the heels, hands to heart. Let's do this two more times with our breath. Try to draw that big circle, big breath in, creating length up the spine. Exhale. One more time. We'll meet on the exhale, lowering the heels and the hands back to our heart. Now keep this focus. Step the feet and legs together. Compact the hips, draw the body to the midline. Hover the right heel from the floor, but maintain a nice level pelvis. And at the hip, we'll open the right knee out towards the right. Vrikshasan or tree pose. You may keep your toes touching down to the ground. We may be a little playful here tonight try to float the sole of the foot to the inner ankle or calf. Some people like to reach down and place the sole of the foot to the inner thigh, that's fine. Avoid placing the foot at the knee. We don't wanna put pressure on our standing knee. Now lift the heart into the hands. If our tree falls over, just simply bring it back up. You're welcome to stay here at the heart center or we can reach those arms out and up again, creating space through the upper half of the body. And if we want a little bit more heart opening chest expansion, we can try to bring the arms behind us, interweaving all 10 fingers, drawing the knuckles down towards the ground, no tension in the face, the neck or the throat. Wherever we are, one more breath. If we have the grip, inhale, release those hands. We'll float them all the way back up. Bring the palms to touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Point the knee forward. Try to extend the foot out and forward. Lower it back down to the ground. Pause. Keep the focus, samastitihi, standing stillness pose. Inhale, draw that nice big circle, create space and mobility around the chest, the shoulders. Exhale, hands to heart. Find your focal point, fix your drishti on one spot, hover the left heel from the floor, Keep the pelvis in a neutral position. At the hip, open the knee out. Ideally, we'd be able to place this foot in the exact same spot we did on the first side. But if for whatever reason that doesn't happen, don't force it. Make sure the face is relaxed. Rug the shoulders away from the ears. If our tree is blowing in the wind tonight, that's no problem. We just come back to it. Choose your variation, staying at heart center, floating those branches out towards the sky, or continuing with this heart opening and trying to add a chest expansion, interweaving the fingers, stretching the knuckles down to the ground, opening the heart. One more breath.
if we have the grip, inhale, reach the arms back up. Exhale, back to that heart center. Point the knee forward. Try to stretch the foot out first. Lower it back down to the ground. Keep the focus. Take a breath. And then again, inhale. Big circle, nice wide wingspan, stretch up. Drishti upwards, a little bit more extension. Exhale, hands to heart. So we'll make another transition to come back down towards the ground. If we moved around in our space a little bit, that's fine. I'm gonna have us meet back at the top of our mat in Tadasana. So when we come back to the front of our mat, we'll come back to our mountain pose with the feet parallel to each other, making contact with the four corners of our feet, floating the arms out beside the body. Palms may turn forward or even outward to continue the opening through the chest, float the head on the shoulders. We'll come back to the breath. Inhale, breathing, big circle. Create as much length and extension as we can up through those fingertips. On this exhale, micro bend the knees, swan dive those arms back around and down. We're hinging at the hips and we're gonna move back down through Uttanasana. Feel free to stop halfway and remain here. Or as those muscles continue to lengthen up the backs of the legs, we may be able to fold forward into Uttanasana. Feel free again to release the arms and the head. Just stay in contact with the strong legs and the core to protect the back. If you're in your full forward fold, do a little sway in the shoulders, a little happy shake yes in the head, happy to be here for ourselves, a little shake no, letting go of anything that doesn't serve us in our practice tonight. And then hands to shins, inhale, squeeze the muscles of the back to lift the heart into a halfway lift. Next exhale, bends the knees, plants the hands, and we're gonna take a big step back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog, you do not need to stay here. You can immediately drop to the knees and be in tabletop, taking some cat cows, flexing and extending the spine. You can also sit back to your child's pose and wait for us there. If we're upside down and downward facing dog, again, we're getting the benefit of this inversion, blood flow towards the head. Big stretch for the back of the body, the legs that maybe have been seating or sitting, sitting all day. <laughs> down dog people, inhale, heels up as high as we can go, stretch out those toes. Exhale, we'll drop the knees to the ground. If it's available, keep the knees together, flatten out the tops of the feet. More traditional child's pose, we'll sit the sit bones to the heels. This time we'll slide our hands back to our feet, palms up. We'll drop the head towards the ground and allow the upper half of our body melt over the lower half. So just let the shoulders and arms get real heavy and sag down beside the body. One more breath here. And then hands under the shoulders, tuck the chin. Again, we're articulating the spine, inhaling. We'll try to sit back on our heels and round up to a seated position, Vajrasana or hero's pose. If that's too much for our knees, you can transition to tabletop. Once we're here, shift over to either hip, it doesn't matter and bring the feet forward. So before we come down to our spine, we're gonna revisit a seated pose and do a couple rounds of Nadi Shodhanam or alternate nostril breathing. Um, for me personally, this is one of the most powerful pranayamas. It gives me almost immediate relaxation, reduces my stress levels incredibly, and just is so centering um, for myself. So. I wanna share that with you all tonight. I think it's a really great tool to have in our toolbox. So I'll guide us through a few rounds of Nadi Shodhanam. We'll come onto our back. We'll do a little bit more asana work 
and then we will take our final relaxation. So coming back to a seat, again, I would suggest elevating our sit bones. I'm going to grab my little firm cushion this time. If you have that box of tissues, you can have it nearby in case you need it. You might not. Again, Sukhasan, easy cross, nice place to start. As long as it's comfortable, you can give your knees some additional support as well. Find those sit bones, loosen up the waistbands as needed. We wanna maintain the posture and the length up to the crown of the head. So I'll guide us through two rounds of Nadi Shodhanam, and then you'll try to continue at your own rhythm and pace. And depending on the rhythm of our breath, we might get through two more rounds, three more rounds, it doesn't matter. And we'll cue us when we'll pause from the pranayama exercise. If you ever get lightheaded, dizzy, just take a break, sit with your natural breath. Don't force or strain. Maintain the posture here. Bring the hands into chin mudra. We touch the index finger to the thumb and extend the other three fingers. This means seal of wisdom or knowledge. We'll rest the hands on our knees with the palms up. Now in your right hand, I won't be mirroring this one, but in your right hand, we take Nasagra Mudra. So it looks like the peace symbol to start, and then we glue the middle and index fingers together. The thumb and the ring and pinky fingers are our pinchers. They're gonna be doing the work. So take this right hand, turn it towards the face, press the middle and index finger right into the eyebrow center. Place the thumb gently on the outside of the right nostril and the ring and pinky finger on the outside of the left nostril. To begin, we inhale through both nostrils. Exhale back out through both nostrils. Now close the right nostril with the thumb and inhale just through the left. Close the left, open the right and exhale. Inhale back through the right side. Close the right, Open the left and exhale. That's one round. Inhale left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale back through the right. Close right, open left, exhale. That's two rounds. Continue at your own rhythm and pace. Now, if you notice one side is more challenging to breathe through than the other, that's totally natural and normal. Just do your best to breathe through that side. If the head or the right arm becomes tired, place the left palm under the right elbow to prop it up so that we can maintain our posture the whole time. And then we'll take the time to finish whatever round we're currently on.
that round finishes when we get to the exhale out the left nostril. So whenever you get to that exhale out the left nostril, you'll exhale completely. And then at the bottom of that exhale, you'll release the hands back down to the knees. You'll let the breath go to wherever it wants. We'll continue to try to focus the mind's eye at the eyebrow center, being very mindful of our posture. We'll take a moment here to just sit quietly with the breath, focusing the mind. Let all the muscles across the face soften and relax. Feel the weight of the shoulders and elbows fall away from the ears, the gentle weight of the hands on the knees. Notice the contact points that the legs are making with each other and where the body is contacting the props and the ground below. Allow the lower half of the body to be connected to the earth below. And from that earth, we allow the upper half of our body to grow and elongate all the way up the length of the spine, sitting up taller, growing taller, up through the crown of the head towards the sky. And then on our next inhale, very softly, slowly, start to flutter those eyelids open again, bringing our awareness to our surroundings. You can release the hands and release the seated pose. So give those legs a little stretch out in front of the body. Prance the legs, point and flex the feet. So mindful movements here. It's time to come back down onto our back. We'll scooch ourselves off of our prop if we used one. We want to sit about halfway towards our mat. Have your goodies ready that we're going to want when we get to Shavasana. Now the safest way to come down onto the ground is kind of lean to one side. Use the hands in front of the body to walk the body down. Stretch one arm out. Lie down onto our side and then roll all the way onto our back. Once we're here, resituate the self. Loosen up the clothing, adjust those ponytails if we have them. Walk the feet in, draw the knees in. Let's give our knees a little hug in towards the body and a little massage side to side here. So we'll finish with another twist. Again, twists are a really great way to release tension down the back, around the neck and shoulders, but they also stimulate our digestive system massaging our internal organs side to side. Extend those arms out from the shoulders like airplane wings. Keep the knees together and the feet parallel. Exhale, allow the knees to fall off to the right hand side. Now, if that thigh doesn't easily touch, place your pillow or a prop underneath the thigh to support it. Place the right hand on the top of the left thigh to deepen the twist if you like. Sink the left shoulder down into the ground. Turn the head to the left. Again, close the eyes and just breathe deeply here. Allow the exhale to carry away any lingering tension or stress in the mind and body. Gravity is our friend when we learn to connect to it. Let the force of gravity help traction the body out. Take one more breath on this side. On the inhale, float the head back to neutral. Float the knees, you can bring them one at a time back to center. 
we might feel like we need to drop the feet and do a little scooch on our low back before we do the other side, that's fine. Pull the knees in and together, feet parallel. Exhale, knees to the left. Place a prop under that left thigh as needed. Left hand on top of the thigh to deepen the twist. Sink the right shoulder into the ground, turn the head to the right. Use those exhales to go further into the pose, both mentally and physically. Imagine taking a washcloth and wringing it all the way out. One more breath on this side. The next inhale floats the head and the knees back up to neutral. Realign the head with the spine. Go ahead and reach those arms over the shin bone. See if we can take a hold of opposite elbows, forearms, or wrists. Draw the nose to the knees to stretch out the root of the neck and the shoulders. Also giving our body a nice big hug here, telling ourselves and our bodies how much we love and appreciate them filling ourselves up with gratitude for everything we have. Take a deep breath in. And on our exhale, we're gonna drop and flop to the ground. So I do want us to do a little bit of abdominal breathing to move into Shavasana tonight. So you can have your book handy nearby. I also wanna give us permission to slide additional props underneath the body. Elevating the legs can be quite nice to undo pressure of gravity throughout the day. So bring your pillows underneath the knees or the legs. Make sure the head has enough support. Adjust those shoulder blades down the back. Typically we let our arm bones roll open beside the body palms up, but first, I'll invite us to place our book on our lower belly. If you do not have a book or does it feel comfortable, you can also place your hands on your belly. Once we have our prop in place, if we're using it, again, you can roll your arm bones out beside the body, palms up. Or if we want to continue that heart opening, feel free to cactus the arms out from the shoulders. Bending at the elbows, backs of the hands flop to the ground. Rock out the head, find the very back center of the skull. Close the eyes. Adjust the placement of the legs, the width of the feet, and then allow the feet to flop open. Let a quality of heaviness come over the whole body. Relax all the muscles of the body, especially all those little muscles across the face, the forehead and brow, the mouth, tongue, and jaw. Now for just a few rounds, we're going to bring our concentration around the navel center. And our next inhale, we'll feel that natural expansion and we'll try to inflate the abdomen and purposefully lift up our book towards the ceiling. On the exhale, we'll enjoy that natural relaxation and contraction and allow the weight of the book and the belly to drop back down into the body. On the inhale, we inflate the belly like a balloon. We try to lift our prop up a little bit higher on the exhale, we let the breath go and we allow the weight of our prop and the belly to drop down into the body. Again, this breath should be even and smooth, in and out through the nose, no force or strain.
Now begin to soften this breath, allowing that rise and fall of the belly to become more subtle, to become smaller. Allow the breath to eventually become very quiet and easy. If the mind wanders away, gently bring it back to the peaceful breath. And we will give ourselves permission to take just one more moment of this day to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, and to sink into Shavasana. We'll slowly start to come back to the natural breath in the body. And we'll start to breathe some life back into the body, waking up the toes, the fingertips, a gentle rock of the head side to side, a roll of the wrists and the ankles. If you still have your prop on the belly, carefully reach up to your book or your prop and place it off to the side of the body. Inhale, breathing. Let's re-extend those arms overhead. Coming back into that long body stretch one more time. Point and flex the feet. Elongate the right side a little bit more. Stretch the left side a little bit more. Come back to center, spread the fingers, spread the toes. Inhale, create as much space as we can in our body. Exhale, float those arms down, step the feet in. Draw the belly in to hug the knees in, gentle rock side to side. Bring the right arm beside the head. Roll all the way into that fetal position on our right side. Cradling the head on the arm, allowing the hand to fall to the floor in front of the heart. Pausing for a moment, sleeping baby pose. This is a nice time to set a positive intention to take with us off of our mat into our evening tonight. Trying to keep the eyes soft or closed, press into the ground. We're going to slowly bring our body back up where we will revisit any comfortable seated posture. Find those sit bones. 
Sit up tall through the crown of the head. We'll take a couple more breaths together tonight to finish our practice. So being mindful of our surroundings, let's float those arms up back out beside the body. Turn the palms up to the ceiling. Inhale through the nose, float those arms all the way back up. And this time gathering up everything we need for the rest of our night. Turn those palms out, big breath out. Exhale, float the fingertips all the way back down to the ground and let go of all that other junk we don't need tonight. One more time, palms up. Inhale, reaching the arms up. This time, bring the palms to touch. Exhale the hands to the heart center. Humbly bow our head down to our heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful to anyone else that made it possible for us all to come together this evening and practice yoga together. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Hi, Om, peace, peace, peace. And I thank you and appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time this evening for yourselves, for supporting each other. I did go a few minutes over. We um, started just a little later, so I wanted to give you a full hour's practice. Um, if you have questions or comments for me, feel free to share. Give me feedback. You can put it in the chat. You can share it with um, Shabana, myself. And ah, thank you. It felt nice for me <laughs> to share with you. <laughs> Say that was divine and I definitely mean in the double meaning there both such a lovely way to calm our minds and our bodies so that we can connect to the world um, in a more beautiful present and calm way right just do a better job at connecting so I loved it absolutely thank you Shabana thank you Antonia so nice to have you we are recording these sessions too and we'll get those shared with Muslim space so you can share them with others and and feel free, we're here for the next three Sundays through Ramadan. So spread the word, um, continue to take care of yourself. And, and yeah, thank you on. very much. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. Big thank oh, you. You're so welcome. I feel like a lightness, uh, weight lifted off my shoulders every time I practice. <laughs> we are so lucky to have you, Joanne, and Austin Yoga Tree in this partnership. So, you know, it's such a beautiful thing. It is, it is. We were serenaded by the birds out there. I don't know if you got to hear, but they were I, I, was, I was like, is that coming from your patio or is that coming from outside? And I was like, that I just... almost wanted to open my door because I often practice with my door open, especially in the mornings. It's a little mosquito-y out there now. And they will come down here and sing. And my students are like, are you playing nature songs I'm like no that's the birds like landing outside and yeah, just that's nature playing nature songs that was such a exactly. lovely addition. I 100% noticed it I don't know I... okay good because it was really quite nice <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys well I know you have the rest of your evening to um rest up and and continue on so um I appreciate you so nice to have you and I'll see you next Sunday yeah thank you so much all right take care